hi friends uh, in this uh, audio video tutorial uh, we will see uh, everything regarding the dams and hydraulics and or in other words we can say uh, it is related to the water resource engineering uh, somewhat related with the irrigation engineering somewhat related with the dam all the whatever uh, video links i have shared shared earlier uh, separately uh, through this video i will share all these video links uh, unitedly uh, so that so that you will get the all the information regarding the somewhat related the in uh, dams and hydraulics or related with the dams uh, terminal job dam the structure of dam then your uh, some duty delta relationship and uh, there some more few more things uh, average mean precipitation calculation for our area based on the rainy station where we noted down there are different methods of uh, calculation of precipitation mean precipitation on an average area that is the thyssen polygon method uh, arithmetic average method isoatel method and many more things related with the hydrology so watch the things uh, carefully so that uh, you will get some information regarding the water resource engineering or hydrology or we can say hydrology or we can uh, what uh, we can say uh, related with the your all your uh, related dams or your irrigation engineering so i am combining in this video i am combining all the video links related with this subject only uh, be careful uh, watch the videos carefully Hello friends, uh, in this uh, video tutorial we will learn uh, the two most important factors that is theoretical and practical profile of gravity dam. So here I have shown two different dams. Here this is the theoretical profile of this figure shows the theoretical profile of dam and this figure shows the practical profile of dam. In theoretical profile of dam there is no provision of free board so up to the uh, here water is stored and this is the H height of water stored then roadway uh, is not possible at for as far as your uh, theoretical profile is concerned and uh, as far as your practical profile is concerned see this is the change so provision of freeboard is there up to here we can store the water up to here so this much is called as the freeboard this portion this portion is called as the freeboard this is the roadway width is possible for reservoir empty condition it will be provide maximum possible stability for reservoir empty condition tension is developed at the two level because because here we are providing the freeboard as well as we are providing the uh, roadway at the top that's why this, this is the main difference and see uh, practically it is not possible to construct the dam like this correct so this is the theoretical profile of a uh, dam then uh, your as far as your the freeboard of of 1.5 times of height of dam is uh, provided so general these are the general calculations where we can use this uh, for uh, during the design of uh, dam or design of dam we can use this uh, then minimum 0.9 meter should be there and as far as 1.5 times the height of the dam then nowadays 3 percent to 4 percent of dam height that will be taken as a free board the width of grave dam is provided as prior specification equivalent to 14 percent of the dam height the usual top width provided varies from 6 meter to 10 meter so 6 meter to 10 meter just, just uh, whatever uh, roadway width whatever we are providing for highways or uh, any other type of uh, way this width we can provide for this uh, uh, for the dam so here all about the uh, practical and theoretical profile of a dam so that is the difference between practical and theoretical profile of dam. We can say here I have written gravity dam, so I have studied regarding the gravity dam. That's why here I have written the gravity dam. But this is as far as whole all dams are concerned. Any type of dam is concerned. So these are the theoretical profile and practical profile. Thank you for uh, uh, watching the video. Uh, if you uh, really interested, if you like the video, please do share it and subscribe the channel. Uh, so that uh, you if you share this information uh, anybody can get uh, benefited uh, by reading such information knowledge so, so this is the knowledgeable information whatever we uh, think so thank you uh, hello friends 
in this audio video tutorial we will learn mean precipitation calculation over an area so here rain gauge stations are involved different rain gauge stations are involved different uh, rain gauges are involved uh, where we need to calculate the precipitation for different uh, we need to note down the precipitation for different rain, rain gauge stations and based on that we need to calculate the precipitation for that average precipitation of that area so here uh, there are three methods to calculate this arithmetic mean method thiessen polygon method and the isoidal method so first in the arithmetic mean method here p bar is the average precipitation over the catchment area p1 p2 p3 up to pn these are the precipitation for on the different rain gauges stations p1 p2 p3 are the precipitation in a given time period at stations 1 2 3 up to n so its p bar is equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 up to pn divided by n which equal to 1 divided by n summation i goes from 1 to n i goes from 1 to n pi this uh, terminology is as per uh, this so already i have explained now second method is thiessen polygon method in that rainfall recorded at each station is in a given given a weightage based on the area closest to the station consider a catchment area with say more than three rain gauge stations uh, then the catchment area is drawn to scale and the position of these six stations are plotted so here i have taken the example of six rain gauge stations so next time uh, so here is the so first we will see the formula if the, there are n number of stations how to calculate the average rainfall for that area average precipitation for given area so p1 p2 p3 are the rainfall at different rain gauge stations a1 a2 a3 are the areas for different rain gauge stations and then the average rainfall over the catchment is p bar is complete p bar is equal to p1 a1 plus p2 a2 up to pn an divided by a1 plus a2 plus an up to an so summation i goes from 1 to n pi ai upon a ai upon a is called as the weightage factor this is the weightage what you would give on to this so here we will see the figure but here so here you will see the figure this is the catchment area uh, or we need to calculate the uh, precipitation for this area so these are the railway station 1 2 3 4 5 6 these are the railway stations and this is the thiessen polygon here the, all these railway stations are joined with the polygon and the polygon with marked with the boundaries and here area is calculated their weightage is given so ai by a a means total area ai ai means area for that rain gauge station only so this rain gauge station one is bounded by this that is a b c d a b c d this is the polygon for this area the next method is isoidal method so i so heights are the these are the imaginary lines uh, they join the rain gauge stations with equal magnitude of rainfall if the two rain gauge stations have equal magnitude then the line which join these two stations is called as the isoid the catchment area is drawn to a scale and the rain gauge stations are marked on it the recorded rainfall values for each area average is to be determined are marked at the respective station neighboring stations outside the catchment area are also considered so here so this is the area catchment boundary these are the rain gauge stations a b c d e and these lines are called as the isoids these isoids are with equal magnitude then the formula is if rainfall value corresponding to the isoids are p1 p2 pn and with area a1 a2 n up to an an minus 1 then p bar average rainfall over the catchment area is determined by a1 into bracket p1 plus p2 divided by 2 plus a2 into p2 plus p2 divided by 2 up to an minus 1 into pn minus 1 plus pn upon 2 so here we are uh, selecting two rain gauge stations earlier rain gauge station and next rain gauge station for that area and the area is considered so here where a1 plus a2
Hello friends, in this video tutorial we will learn a basic concept from irrigation engineering. There are methods of irrigation. There are four methods of irrigation. First is surface irrigation, second is sprinkler irrigation, third one drip or trickle irrigation and fourth one is subsurface irrigation. So surface irrigation consists of a broad class of irrigation method in which water is distributed over the soil surface by gravity flow. The irrigation water is introduced into the level or graded furrows or basins using siphons. Gated pipe or turn out structures and is allowed to advance across the field. Surface irrigation is the best suited to flat land slopes and medium to fine textured soil types which promote the lateral spread of water down the furrow or across the basin. So here in this figure you will see this furrow are maintained to distribute the water. Here we'll fall will get some wastage of water. So I avoid this we'll use another method. Another method is sprinkler irrigation. This type of sprinklers are fitted in the land where we want to do the where we want to do the irrigation for that land. Sprinkler irrigation is a method of irrigation in which water is sprayed or sprinkled through the air in rain like drops. The spray and sprinkling devices can be permanently set in place, solid set, temporarily set and then moved after a given amount of water has been applied. Portable set or intermittent mechanical move or they can be mounted on booms and pipelines that continuously travel across the land. Then third one is the drip irrigation or trickle irrigation. So this is the system shown in figure. So drip irrigation system are method of micro irrigation wherein water is applied through emitters to the soil surface as drop or small stream. Here we can save the water. Here we avoid the wastage of water. So what, whatever amount of water required for land, only say that amount of water will be supplied to the land. So that's why this method is very effective method. The discharge rate of the emitters is low, so this irrigation method can be used on all soil types. The next is the subsurface irrigation. So subsurface irrigation consists of methods whereby irrigation water is applied below the soil surface. The specific type of irrigation method varies depending on the depth of water table. So subsurface irrigation, whatever water applied below the soil. So these, uh, this type of pipe networks are provided below the so soil, below the soil, below uh, depth at the root of the crops directly at the root of the crops when the water table is well below the surface drip or trickle irrigation emission devices can be buried below the soil surface if depth of water is high if depth of water for the soil surface is high then this method is useful that is subsurface irrigation so this is also free flooding method for soil so free lateral drains or across drains we can use field ditch or main these are the main these are the main drains these are the lateral drains the distance between center to center distance between two lateral drains is for 15 to 45 meter and this way you can use the free flooding method so if you like the video please do share it and subscribe the channel for more such fruitful videos and knowledgeable videos thank you Hello friends, in this video tutorial we will learn some basic concept from irrigation engineering that is relation between duty delta and base spread. First we will define these terms and then we will see what is the relation between these three terms. First delta, delta is the total depth of water supplied to the crop during base period. It is in meter. Duty, duty of crop is in hectare per cumic. Base period of crop is in days. Now define. 
definition duty is the area of land that can be irrigated with a unit volume of water supplied across the base period whereas delta is the depth of water required to raise a crop or a unit area base period of any crop is defined as the period between first watering to the last watering to the crop so it is the period between first watering and last watering and the crop crop period is the whole time required to grow the crop base period is only the watering period in which crop is irrigated that is the first watering to and last watering period between first watering and last watering note base period is different than crop period because crop period is total time taken by any crop up to harvesting but the base period is only the watering period so now relation between duty delta and base period now by definition of duty volume of water applied to irrigate capital d hectare of land for 1 second is 1 meter cube then the volume of water applied for one day is 1 into 60 into 60 into 24 this 24 day hour then 60 minute 60 second and this is 1 the 86400 meter cube similarly the volume of water applied for b days is v is equal to 86400 into b meter cube land area irrigated a is equal to d into 10000 so 10000 d meter square the d is in hectare we have converted it in meter square so now then the depth of water applied on this land is delta is equal to volume upon area so delta is equal to 86400 into b divided by 10000 into d so therefore delta is equal to 8.64 b divided by d this is the relation so this is the delta notation for delta so delta is the depth of water required so now we will see one small example find the delta for crop when its duty is 864 hectare per cubic on the field the base period of this crop is 120 days solution so first you write given data capital d duty is equal to 864 hectare per cubic here cubic is meter cube per second base period is 120 days delta we need to find as we know delta is equal to 8.64 b divided by d so delta is equal to 8.64 into 120 divided by 864 put the values of b and d we'll get the delta delta is equal to 1.20 meter so if you like the video please do share it and subscribe the channel watch videos carefully to get the knowledge hello friends in this video tutorial we will learn some concepts from irrigation engineering that is the relation between duty delta and base period first we'll define that term and then we'll see what is the relation between these three terms duty delta and base period delta is the total depth of water supplied to the crop during its base period in meter duty duty of crop is in hectare per cubic cubic is cubic meter cube per second base period base period of crop in days so here duty is the area of land that can be irrigated with a unit volume of water supplied across the base period whereas delta is the depth of water required to raise a crop over a unit area so now how to find the relation between duty delta and base period so by definition of duty volume of water applied to irrigate capital d hectare of land for 1 second is 1 meter cube then the volume of water applied for 1 day is 1 into 60 into 60 into 24 it is 86400 meter cube similarly the volume of water applied for b days b is the base period b is equal to 86 86400 into b meter cube land area irrigated is equal to a which is equal to d into 10000 meter square the value is in meter square d value is in hectare so we are uh, we have converted it in the meter square then the depth of water applied on this land is delta is equal to volume divided by area which is delta is equal to 86400 into b divided by 10000 into d so therefore delta is equal to 8.64 into b divided by d 
so delta this is notation for delta delta is equal to 8164b divided by d now we will see one small numerical find the delta for a crop when its duty is 864 hectare per cumic here cumic means meter cube per second on the field the best period of this crop is 120 days then solution is given data first you write d is the duty 864 hectare per cumic b base period 120 days delta we need to find as we know we know the relation delta is equal to 8.64 b divided by d so delta is equal to 8.64 into put the values of b 120 divided by put the value of d 864 so delta is equal to 1.20 meter so this is what the relation between this duty delta and base period in the next video we will see another concept from irrigation engineering so thank you for watching the channel if you like it please do share it and subscribe the channel hello friends in this audio video tutorial we will learn something regarding the dams dam is a physical structure which is uh, used uh, constructed across a river or stream to store water or water may be used for multiple multiple purposes so here we will see first structure of dam this is the structure of dam this is the crest this side is upstream side this side is, side is downstream side this is the spillway inside the dam this is sluice way this is gallery this is normal water level here maximum water level and here is the this much for here up to here we can store the water this portion is called as the free board this portion is called the hill of dam this portion is called the toe of dam so this is what the structure of dam now we will see actually what is meant by dam we will define it dam will be structure built across a stream or river or estuary to retain water dams are built to provide water for human consumption irrigation purpose industrial processes for generating hydroelectric power we require this stored we can use this stored water then for navigation purposes so also the water used for recreational activities such as swimming boating and fishing many dams are built for more than one purpose so it is also called as a multi-purpose dams so now types of dams so first is the gravity dam gravity dams are massive structure dam which is constructed of concrete or stone masonry these dams are held by the gravity of the force to the ground so this type of dam we can say it is a gravity dam then arch dam or buttress dam a buttress dam is also called as hollow dam is a dam with a solid watertight upstream side that is supported at intervals on the downstream side by the series of buttresses so here buttress dam so these are the buttresses solid buttresses these are provided at the downstream side this will be the upstream side so for the dam on upstream side we are storing the water as flow as based on the flow of river we can say which one is the dam downstream side or which one is the upstream side an arch dam is a dam curved in plan and carries at major part of its water load horizontally to the abutments by arch constant radius arch dam variable radius arch dam constant angle arch dam double curvature arch dam these are some basic types of arch dam we'll just see here a basic types earth dam earth fill dam also called as earth dam embankment dam dam built up by compactive successive layers of earth using the most impervious material so that water may not pass through it then it depends uh, stability dam stability of dam depends on this mat uh, you material used then now factors governing selection of type of dam so these are the n number of factors first is topography geological and foundation conditions availability of materials spillway size and location earthquake zone height of dam and other factors such as cost of construction maintenance life of dam aesthetics so topography dictates the first choice of the dam a narrow u-shaped valley narrow stream flowing between high rocky walls would suggest a concrete overflow dam 
a low plain country would suggest earth filled dam with separate spillways so see these are the topography so i want the uh, or by based on the topography we, uh, our construction should be economical a uh, more water with, with less construction uh, geological and foundation conditions geological and foundation conditions should be thoroughly surveyed because the foundations have to carry the weight of dam ultimately it leads to the stability of dam solid rock foundation such as granite has strong bearing power gravel foundations are suitable for earthen dam silt and fine sand foundation suggest construction of earth dam or very low gravity dam clay foundation likely to cause enormous settlement of dam so we will avoid the clay foundation then availability of material for construction of dam we need availability of material so that to have uh, our construction should be economical one or project should be economical one then spillway size and location spillway disposes the surplus river discharges the capacity of the spillway will depend on the magnitude of the flood to be bypassed the spillway is therefore much more important on rivers and streams with large flood potential earthquake zone if dam is situated in earthquake zone its design must be include earthquake forces the type of structure best suited to resist earthquake shock without danger are earthen dams and concrete gravity dam height of dam earthen dams are usually not provided for more than 30 meter or so for greater height gravity dams are generally preferred then forces acting on the dam structure the forces acting on dam structure are water pressure uplift pressure or seepage load earthquake forces self weight of the dam silt pressure wave pressure and ice pressure we'll see in detail first water pressure it is the pressure of the water that acts perpendicular on the upstream face of the dam for this there are two cases case a upstream face of the dam is vertical and there is no water on downstream side of the dam so this will be the figure so this is a pressure distribution diagram so here p1 pressure h is the height of dam this is the free board of the dam this is downstream side this is upstream side so this width of dam is b height of dam is h then pressure p1 is equal to w h square divided by 2 h is the height up to which water is stored w is the specific weight of water and this pressure will act triangularly this pressure pattern pressure pattern is like this and it this pressure acts at a distance of h by 3 from the bottom then case b upstream face with batter and there is no water on downstream side so this way upstream face is not vertical then how to calculate so firstly calculate water pressure p1 like this water pressure p2 water pressure p1 is for this much of water and this much of water is pressure is remaining so this pressure is p2 how to calculate p2 up to this height is h2 this height is h1 main width of dam is b this width is small b so p2 is calculated b into h2 into w plus 0.5 b into h1 into w so here for this we divide this by square rectangle and triangle and then calculate pressure so h2 is the height h1 is the height w is the specific weight w is the specific weight as you know then forces of another pressure pressure p2 acts through the center of gravity of the water column resisting on sloping upstream face if there is water standing on downstream side if there is pressure standing on downstream side this downstream side also, if there is water then how to calculate pressure so it is based on the this figure gamma w specific weight of water so this way we can calculate pv and ph horizontal vertical force as well as horizontal force this is the b then second type of pressure is uplift pressure or seepage pressure when the water is stored on the upstream side of the dam there exists a head of water equal to the height of up to which the water is stored this water enters the pores fissures cracks of the foundation material under pressure it also enters the joint 
between the dam and foundation at the base and pores of the dam itself this water then seeps through the and tries to emerge out on the downstream side the seeping water creates hydraulic gradient so uplift pressure here in this figure you can see if water goes seepage is occur here there may be upliftment of pressure so this may be a h is the height of the dam b is the width of the dam so the pressure pattern is again triangular so it is pu uplift pressure is equal to w h b divided by 2 so w h w is a specific weight as you know pu is the uplift pressure p is the width of dam b is the width of dam and this pressure will act at a distance of b by 3 from this hill this is the hill of the dam this is the toe of the dam as we have seen in structure of dam in earlier figure then earthquake forces then earthquake forces you can take the earthquake forces in this fashion then forces acting on dam structure like hydrodynamic force due to inertia of water this force will act in this fashion gamma w alpha h c h c is the computed in this equation p e h horizontal pressure h is the depth of reservoir z is the depth of water in meters from the top of the reservoir to the point of concentration cm is the depends on the upstream slope of slab then again another equation then self weight of dam self weight of dam how we are calculating the self weight of dam w is equal to gamma m into volume first we will calculate the volume of that structure and then we will multiply this by unit weight of that dam material we will get the self weight of dam so for stability self weight of dam is necessary then silt pressure silt pressure is calculated by using this formula then wave pressure so wave pressure is calculated by using these formulas then the waves are generated like this and then ice pressure then stability analysis of dam stability against forward turning against forward sliding sliding and shear concrete over stresses foundation over stresses so over turning so this will see in another few things we'll see in the next video so till then watch this video and get the knowledge regarding